What's up, everybody? I'm Reggie Williams, founder and CEO of Ambrosia for Heads. And with me, I have Jake Payne. And together, this is our What's the Head on podcast. We got a very, very special guest today representing Boom. the horseman, <laughs> Killer Boom. Priest, Cannabis, Rascas, and of course, Corrupt. Yeah, yeah. Yo, congrats on the album, man. It's been 20 years in the making, the last ride. I know it's been a long, a long ride. So congrats on, on making it happen a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we yeah. worked hard on it and finally we got the, re the recipe down packed hmm. and uh, gave it to the people. They accepted it very well. I was shocked. Um, but it just goes to show you the hip hop community and culture is live and kicking. Yeah, you were saying y'all charted. Uh, yeah. Which is dope. Dope, man. So we want to go back to the beginning uh, because y'all got a, an incredible, incredible story. So, you know, how did you guys come together in, in the very beginning? Because it's a very diverse crew, you know, multiple coasts, the whole nine. I uh, just, you know, uh, through the game itself, meeting over and over time and time again. I done music with Raz, done music with Cannabis, The Lost Boys. Uh, music makes me high remix, you know, and same with Priest. I worked with Priest before, and so you know, we was all friends, and you know, we decided to get together, and you know, we said we gonna make a group, just us. Nobody was doing it at the time at all, so we was the first of our kind, and um, we did it, and we, we as we was making the project kept getting leaked so we had to start from scratch every time so finally our normal lives and careers kicked in we all had to do our own things and we would always come back to try and do it it would leak again so you know 20 semi years trying to get it together where it wouldn't be leaked so you know what i'm saying um but we just got together like that man and, uh got in the studio put our heads together and Canny came up with a great idea uh, going at the Four Horsemen. First thing, when he said that to me, you know, I was thinking about NWA, mm. the wrestling television show. Yeah. Rick Flair and them and the Anderson brothers. Yeah. Arn Anderson and his brother. They was the Four Horsemen with, with the uh, with Cuz, the other one. And I was thinking about them like, oh, that's tight. And then he broke it down and biblical terms and shit. I was like, damn, oh, that's what you mean. Ooh. That was pretty keen. Yeah. So I was like, wow, I, lo I love it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what our album, basically the whole concept of it, you know what I'm saying? We are the apocalypse. We're bringing it to the table in the form of hip hop music. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you were, uh, y'all each chose kind of a plague or a pestilence. You were a famine, is that right? Those aren't plagues. Those are the actual four horsemen of the apocalypse. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Each one represented something. One represented pestilence because he brought the locusts and all the rest of that type of shit to the table, mm. disease and all of that. Then you have famine. He brought starvation to the table. You know what I'm saying? I think locusts came from him too because he killed the crops mm. and everybody, you know, starved. Then you have war. Everybody went to war. You know, war was the th third horseman. And the last one, of course, was death. And that's Raz Kaz, pestilence, I'm famine, gaudy. And Cannabis is war <laughs> and priest is death, mm. which kind of fits our descriptions as they are. Yeah, I was going to say, how did you choose famine? I didn't. Okay. Famine chose me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It just fit perfect because I'm the headless horseman from the door. I told him, well, I'm the headless horseman. I'm looking for it to buy a crane. <laughs> Damn me. Goddamn right. You know, sleepy, sleepy hollow, nigga. 
corrupt when the group came together around 99 2000 when i first heard of it on cannabis's second album um you know of everyone you know you were the guy who had the platinum plaques you know and i've always heard stories of you just being this this battle hungry mc in la you know i know that that played a role in in your connection you know with a host of people but what was it about you that made you open to another group and a group with with guys i mean this this is unheard of like you said what you were talking about so for you was it just the competitive spirit was it something else that excited you about the prospects of this project well you know i live for the mic most importantly you know uh i love hip-hop as we talked about before i'm from philly so that's embedded in me um so, you know, when we all was together, all, you know, all we did was run. So when the idea came to the table, making a group, you know what I'm saying? We all came a part of that. You know, I was one of the front liners. You know what I'm saying? That this, yeah, this is what we need to do because it's different than the group I'm from. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is a hip hop group, pure and adulterated words, lyrics. The group I'm with is real life gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? about the streets and about our real lives. And this was my opportunity to be a part of something that was hip hop based so I could broadcast my pen. Mm -hmm. And that was the key to the game. That's the key to the horseman is strictly the mic. You know, it wasn't about making hits or making, you know, shit for the streets. It was making something for the culture. So that enthused me. I love that to death. So yeah, I was rolling regardless. You know, as far as this album, is there a song that you feel like, you know, you, you talked about the starts and stops of, you know, the leaks and the bootlegs and all of that. I mean, this is a really nice body of work, but for you as somebody who waited and kept coming back to it, is there a specific moment on the last ride that you really feel like captures that spirit when you started the ride, when you started this journey 20 plus years ago? Yeah, when Raz came to my house, he made a personal trip just to come and play me the album and uh, let me hear it. And that's why I said, okay, yeah, all of this paid off because Raz and M80 put the album together and uh, went into the vault, grabbed shit, our most recent shit, grabbed some shit from the vault that never was exposed, put it all together musically and, and came up with the whoop bop, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And artwork and the whoop, and wham. So, you know, all I added to the table after that was direction on how we're going to present it to the people, how we're going to give it to the people. Because uh, after 20 years of them waiting, you know, it's hard to get them to take it serious. Like, this is really going to happen. So it was a gaudy process to get the people to realize that this was actually the real deal. This is the real album. Everything else was uh, prequels. Mm. So, you know, that's how we put all of our heads together, you know what I'm saying? And got it to this point. So, you know, that was it. Raz came, played the album, showed me the artwork. You know, we got posters, we got we, we got more than posters that that we're bringing to the table. We got portraits, we have a skateboard line, horseman skateboards, and all, all kinds of shit. My bad, hold on. Oh, dope. So when you go to our GGR webpage, you know, these are the things we'll be selling. We got the portrait, you know what I'm saying? Handcrafted by Glitch himself who created the characters. You know what I mean? So, you know, we got all of these different things to present to the people and give them, you know? So all of this we came up with as we sat and talked, then we got in line with Reprise and made it official. Cannabis was already rolling. So, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that's what it's all about. You know, we put all our heads together to make every inch of the project. Yeah. So I know it took a bunch of kind of starts. What was it about this time that helped you guys make it a reality? Um. You know, basically with everybody and they separate things that they're doing, somebody had to take it 
you know, take it, you know, um, how should I word it? Somebody had to give it the attention it deserved. Everybody was so spread out. And Raz was the key. Raz took the time out to put everything in place, put it all together, put the album totally together. He did that. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And, and M80. So they did all that. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Uh, he brought it to me. He already got Killer Priest aboard, already got Candy aboard. He said, Corrupts the final uh, straw to break this camel's back. He brought it to me and presented the whole thing. And, uh, you know, that's what it took. It took somebody's dedication, yeah. his drive, and love for the project to piece it all together and get all the members aboard. Yeah. That was Razzle Dazzle. You guys are all competitive MCs. I know y'all take that pen game very, very seriously. So how did that express itself in the creative process? You know, were you guys like competing with one another, competing with yourself? Like who were you competing with when you were writing? We was having fun. You know, all of us feel about him seeing the same. So, you know, we all got opportunities. To, you know, uh, it wasn't about competition. It was about having a good time. So what, did y'all make any of the songs in the studio together or you had to do it all separately? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did 95% of the album together. I think only one wasn't together was... Uh, um, well, it was two, you know what I'm saying? One is just Killer Priest and Raz. Another one is uh, Champion with Chino XL, Killer Priest, Raz, and Planet Asia. Oh, and there's another one, um, uh, what did Raz call it? Sario or something like that. Uh, some different kind of name, but that- Centaur? Centaur, I'm saying to you. Centaur, that one? Yep, Centaur, that's the one. Because that was originally just uh, Cannabis and Priest. Gotcha. So then me and Raz threw ours on there to make it that magic. Now, now I want to make sure I heard you correctly, Corrupt. I mean, is it true? Because when that when those bootlegs came out, I remember they had it for sale at Armin's in, in Philly. And I was like, I'm not going to buy this because I knew it wasn't right, you know. Um, so I didn't listen to that, but are some of the things that you guys are saying, you know, the verses are certain elements from sessions over the years, or is this all just brand new material from, you know, on the writing side? No, some's from the vault that wasn't heard. Mm -hmm. Others are new that we laid, um, mixed all up like gumbo. You know what I'm saying? Cause after the second time we tried to get it together and it was taken away. Uh, we just stored everything in the vault mm. and said, we'll get back to all of this. And then when Raz was ready to put his heart and soul into it, we had already laid some new ones mm. and that got thrown in the vault. And then Raz just racked it all up and just pieced it together like a puzzle. Mm. So you said it's been 20 years in the making and you've lived a lot of life since then, you know, on the music side and the personal side. So how do you think this album changed in its sound from what you guys would have done back then? Um, well, you know, as you hear the album, ain't no new in it musically. That's hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no trap beats, ain't no gangster beats. It's all hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we didn't have a lot of uh, the big producers and stuff all involved. We wanted that gutter that's going to capture that hip hop culture, you know, raw and untapped and touched hip hop culture, you know, that brings the mic out. So, yeah, you know, it's new music, you know what I'm saying? But the feeling is original. I mean, I give you guys a lot of credit because I have to imagine the fans really drove this. I know I've pestered all four of you individually over the years. Like, is this ever going to happen? Um, but you did it. And, you know, you brought out, you know, the canvas and the skateboards and you, you know, you having this conversation. I mean, you guys have put your all into it. And I know there's other things you could be doing, but, you know, can you just speak to me about the dedication you have to the 
the people that were excited when they read about it in a source or double XL in 99 or 2000, keeping this alive besides yourselves? Well, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's something that, um, you know, we wanted to give to the table. We didn't know how people was going to bond to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, out of sight, out of mind, you know, you're easily replaced as you can see through the game. So, you know, you take a week off or a weekend off, and by the time you come back to the game, somebody's in your slot because the game don't wait, like Warren G and Nate said. Rest in peace, Nate, dog. Hmm. So we didn't really know how people would take to it, but, you know, we was like, you know, we pushing this line anyway. You know what I'm saying? Those that will like it, you know, they'll like it. Those that don't, you know, more power to them. And that's the thing about music is so diverse. The genres are so widespread. There's always something for somebody. So we just wanted to give them to the, the real hip hop fans of ours and the hip hop heads. This was for them. And the crazy thing is a lot of people outside of that genre that, that felt it because this wasn't all about the beats. This was mainly about the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Where it came from a time era where the lyrics uh, made the beat, where nowadays the beat makes the lyrics. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that was our whole thing towards it. So, you know, you can't come up with these type of lyrics with a, you know, a nice beat or, you know, a trap beat. Those are specific, specific lines of music for specific subjects and subject matter, you know what I'm saying? And you put the right subject matter to it, the right voice, and you come out with a hit. Same thing with hip hop. You put the right subject matter to it, creativity, uh, the right voice, and the right amount of bars, the right bars, and it's a hit in its own right. So, you know, you've been at it for 30 years now and kept yourself relevant and consistent that whole time. What do you think is the key to your longevity? Uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest, knowledge. You know what I'm saying? I have great teachers through Snoopy. Snoopy is the key to corrupt. You know, he's my teacher. He's gonna tell me what I, what I like to hear when I do good. And he's gonna let me know when I do wrong and tell me what I don't want to hear. And that's what you need in your life, honesty. You need somebody who you look up to because you'll listen to them to be honest with you. You know, we all make mistakes, we're human. And to educate you on this game, Dog taught me about business. He taught me the business of things. He educated on uh, money, saving money. Dad was also a key to saving the money because he's the Grinch. <laughs> he ain't buying shit. <laughs> Christmas, cuz get the kids something. Man, I ain't getting nobody shit. They they old enough to get their own shit. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> God, man, then it dawned on me. That's why he got money. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I'm not mad at that. He's like, look, this what I'm this this my gift to uh game. Get a job. I said, God damn, what about the baby babies? I'm telling them now so they'll know for later. <laughs> I, said, I said, I ain't fooling with you. But yeah, you know, having good people around me that know this game, even when it comes to the streets, you know, you got teachers there too, so you don't make the wrong, you know, decisions in the streets. You could take your life, put you in jail for the rest of your life. I had great teachers. My brother draws. Big U was a great teacher. You know what I'm saying? All the homies from his age, age group, you know what I'm saying? My brother Broomy, rest in peace. Kenny Mack, Sleep. Uh, uh, Nikki Bam, you know what I'm saying? He kept a close eye on me, kept me out the way of goofiness. Tony Tobin, Battle Cat, you know what I'm saying? Kept me working. Uh, Chico. Uh, I inspired him to rap. And he came out with a group that was successful called Chico and Cool Water. Mm -hmm. And he was he was a basketball star. You know what I'm saying? He was the basketball star from the neighborhood. And 
I was the MC. And then, you know, he became an MC. He enjoyed it so much and made his own group. So we inspire each other, you know, each one teach one, but that my longevity came from staying alive. That's why I give credit to where that's supposed to go. Key to Rock and my little brother, Baby Humpty. And, you know, the game from Snoop, Dr. Dre, Suge, about the business and music itself in general. Snoop taught me how to make a song. Now I ain't know how to make a song. All I know how to do is murder MCs. So, you know, like, ain't no fun. We made that. You hear the beat. Snoop like, what you got for it, Corrupt? I said, okay. Uh, I mutilate them C's. I, Snoop said, whoa, 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 wait, 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 Corrupt, Corrupt. Listen to the beat. Beat's gonna <laughs> tell you what you're gonna say. I mean, you see, this is fun. You know, rap about things people can relate to. You know, like, on Crenshaw, what was y'all doing? Rap about things y'all doing, Crenshaw. Or rap about one of these funky ass bitches and shit. What experience you went through. You know, you rap about things like that, Corrupt. You know what I'm saying? You don't, kill every MC all the time, which educated me on writing songs and Nate Dog. So all of the people you hear me with throughout my history of music was a piece of my education. That, that MC murderer comes out a little bit on Believer. And I know that this is a project where that part of you shines. And I think, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's one of the most, on that aspect, exciting corrupt verses I've had in some time. Reminded me a lot of the Stranded on Death Row corrupt or the nine times out of 10 with DJ Quick corrupt. Um, you know, what motivated you? Like, like, just talk to me a little bit more. Talk to us a little bit more about that moment because I think it's one of your highlights on the album. Just the mic, an adulterated mic. Stranded on Death Row was the mic nine times out of 10 was the mic. I did learn from Snoop, the beat is gonna tell you where to go. And the beat on Believers, that's where it took me. Actually, there was a beat before that, you know what I'm saying, um, that I was on, that I laid my verse to. And that's what that beat brought out of me. And it mm. just put the beat to Believers so much. I mean, that happens in hip hop, where you, you be on this record, and then the beat will end up changing before it comes out. Dre did that a lot, right? With those like, you know. G those, thing is yeah. three years old. The original beat to G thing is nothing like the one that came out and became so classic. But the lyrics fit that beat so well. It's the birth of remixes, mm. you know, you got the original record and then you change the beat, the lyrics, the cadence and everything fits this other beat, might even fit it better. And uh, that's the case with G-Dang. That's the case with Believers. And to tell you the truth, I think uh, Impossible is the only beat that stayed. Nope, Impossible, uh, this shit right here. Uh, yeah, it's a couple ones that the beat stayed. The other ones, uh, Raz just got a whole different beat. The lyrics fell in pocket. Oh, yeah. This shit right here might be my favorite track on the album. It's on our, our, our Spotify playlist. Uh, that 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 goes so hard to me. But you know, you talk about just wanting to murder MCs. One of my favorite clips ever. Like I, I I hit this probably like once a month or so. Is is Dre is on the piano, and it's you, Daz, and, and Snoop just freestyling. You, you and Nate Dog. Yeah, and Nate Dog. Word. Nate Dog. Uh, yeah, on the hook. Um, like how much was that a part of your like upbringing? Just like in the studio, just just spitting, just freestyling. Um, on on believers or period? Just period, just period. Uh, no, the, the the cadence and delivery is freestyle. Yeah, words are on the paper. How I say it and how I deliver it. That's the freestyle of it. Cause it ain't saying it how it should be. I say it to the beat and the rhythm. So I stop at places I wouldn't stop here. It's just how I feel as I'm saying it. I freestyle my flow. But most of my raps start off with a freestyle. Just feeling the beat, busting to it, whoop whoop, and then I'll say a line that just, ah, uh, whoa. Not repeat it again. 
And that might be the beginning of my shit. Like, ain't no fun. That's a fun record. But to myself as a plan, okay, Snoop want me to be cool with it. Yeah, right. Rolling down the streets, right. I'm a six foe, right. Roll, right. If corrupt gave a fuck about a bitch, I'd always be broke, right. Ooh, I like that. If corrupt gave a fuck about a bitch. I never had no money. Ah, something like that. Yeah. It all comes from freestyle. Uh, all of like, <clears throat> um, like on doggy style, shiznit, one take Jake, all freestyle. Snoop got behind the mic, the beat was playing, he went straight all the way through, as you hear it on the record. Dr. Dre right. loved it. Oh, that's a keeper. <laughs> the dog said, okay, let me write to this, I like this. He said, no, nah, man, this is done. That easy. Dr. Dre taught us our freestyles can be actual songs. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> that really set the pace for me for, that's what I mean by learning off of Dr. Dre and set the pace that my freestyle can actually, you know, be the lyrics I do. If it's tight enough, if it sounds good, I'll freestyle it and it might just keep the first four bars because it set the cadence, my voice and the delivery. From there, I might write, might keep eight bars. From there, I might write. Doggy Dog World was freestyle in the beginning. If you give me 10 bitches, then I'll fuck all 10. See my homie Snoop Dogg sipping juice and gin. Don't tread, ah, oh, I like that beat, 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 pop. You know, um, um, Morticians was a freestyle. You know what I'm saying? And I turned it into lyrics. Oh yeah, I'm making niggas panic. <laughs> yes. Man. As battle rapper, as a battle rapper, you know, um, the competition, if you were, so Slaughterhouse, you guys are, I think the most, if not the most, one of the most lyrical groups ever assembled before you guys, right? You know, you, Killer, Cannabis, and Razzcast. So if you had to choose one group to battle between Black Hippie, Slaughterhouse, and any four members of Wu you wanted to choose, who would it be? Wow. I think that's a question that you really can't pick if you're smart. <laughs> you never, you, that's, a, that's an equation you'll never be able to figure out. They each have their own lane. You know what I'm saying? They're not even all, they're not even in the same lanes. So it'd be like comparing oranges and apples. And you know, battle rap ain't about, see, that's the whole thing, like, you know, who can see who. That battle right there you talking about is all about the music. It ain't got nothing to do with the rhymes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Battle rap is without music. You know what I'm saying? Beatboxing, spill. Mm -hmm. Those that normally rap, written raps, I, I demolish those guys. Freestyle, start talking about shit that's around. That's the key to battling. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, which one of them would freestyle and win? That's the, that's a battle. Mm. And out of all of them, until you see them actually freestyle and get down, I can't really make that assumption. Mm. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Were you ever tempted? You know, I know, I know Cannabis, you know, did his thing. Were you ever tempted when the battle rap was booming to step in? You know, Joe Budden, there's been a few artists that have cast, you know, who's just on the phone. Um, I was always curious, was Corrupt going to entertain that? What? Going into like the UR, you know, the, the, the ultimate rap league or, you know, one, some of these battle leagues. <laughs> I'm gone. What I look like in that battle? <laughs> I was 10 years old. The fuck that league gonna do for me? It's great for everybody, yo. Not for Gotti. Shit, I got my deal off a of battle. I became the key to the West Coast off a of battle. I battle slaughtered entire high schools and shit. I slaughtered MCs in a real game. Fucking ate up the whole motherfucking, the tunnel. Mm. Mm. What the fuck more battles can I do? I'm just saying though, you know what, battling these guys and I ate the tunnel up, cuz, real live in effect. That's New York City, cuz. Yeah. Who could do that? Yeah. Tell somebody to go and eat the tunnel up, cuz, then they can, then I might entertain it. But all that other shit, like, I'm, I'm beyond that. That's, See, a that's great why point. they have those URLs, so motherfuckers can get Gotti's respect. Mm. 
So you don't beat the king of a castle and then come down and swordplay with mm. the citizens. Mm. Who does that? Yeah, that's a bar. So no way, man. That's that that man, my you know what? When they had the URL, I was retired, guys. Mm. Yeah. You understand me? You don't come out of retirement. For that. That game. When I was young, they were nowhere around. Now the young corrupt. Yeah, I'd have been in that motherfucker. it had been a problem. That's what it would have been, a problem. But at my age and my victorious amount of heads I got on my wall, <laughs> they time to prove themselves. You know what I'm saying? That shit ain't for me. Shit, man. I, uh, my mantle's too full. I can't even put no more mics up on my mantle. You understand me? No television cameras, nigga. Real deal. <laughs> came straight from no time to prepare. And, you know, I love the URL, but what kind of battle is that when you can already write about somebody? Because that's not a battle. That's like a song. People making songs about each other. So y'all battling with songs and shit? That's not a battle. Battle is out the blue. You know, hey, you, me, I ain't got time to talk about you like that. Guy. You don't have a week to write a rhyme. You ain't got a month to prepare on what I'm going to say to this guy. It's random. But that's my generation. So, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't get into that right there because that's not battling to me. You know, there's no preparations for you go for it with your skills. If you got written rhymes, you do your written rhymes. So you don't got time to prepare. Yeah. So that's nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? And I'll be honest, out of that whole new age battling that was brought to the table, I ain't heard nothing like Loaded Lux. Mm. Nigga came to the motherfucker battle with a casket, my nigga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And his Ron was just so, he was like, man, look, woo, that was special. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most special I saw ever, cuz, with a casket yeah. in a tuxedo. <laughs> what? That was nuts, what? yeah. Who does that? Yeah. Now that. Showmanship. Oh my God, that was special. You hear them words he said, man? What he said, how he said it. Woo, that was exciting. Yeah. That was exciting. You know, I got my favorites. Lux, Murder Mook. I seen him break a person apart like chicken wings, threw out <laughs> chicken bones. I said, damn, God. Ain't no way I'm gonna fuck around with these youngsters, cuz them motherfuckers, watch, that's what the problem was. Mm. Fooling with me, I was too young, cuz and fresh, chopped out. I was 12 years old serving 18, 20 year olds, mm. 25 year olds, and shit, seasoned ones. They didn't have it, they, they didn't have this. Mm. I was youth, and that's the one thing about being a champion when you reach a certain plateau and you at that pinnacle. You don't come off that pinnacle and come down and fool with these young folk, cuz that's how you get embarrassed. I wasn't fucking with no loaded lux and murder mook. Mm. Fuck out of here, man. My 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 motherfucking my whole wall of mics be gone. <laughs> you understand me? Shit, man. Them motherfuckers was so ready. Nigga, they I'd have to hit them like Eminem and just talk about myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, know, Champion is another track uh that I love and it showcases the diversity on the album, you know, just like the, the chat, like reggae kind of like influence to it. Uh, who, who in the group was the Pat Benatar fan? Everyone. Word, okay. Yeah, you know, I've always wanted to rap on that beat. Raz, Raz and Killer Priest Chief. They ain't invited nigga to the park. <laughs> yeah, fucking what, love and war? Love is a battlefield? That's the joint, yeah. Ain't no, I don't know any MCs who don't love that boom, 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 that beat. Yeah. You know, that come on the instrumental cause niggas start to bust. That was a good one, man. It got me good there, being stingy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit. Out of fluid. Out of fluid for that one. Plus, you know, I love the rap about these ladies and these funky bitches. <laughs> It was a nice chop too. They chopped the beat, lovely, you know. Yeah, I love it. I love it. They did well too, and the, the young lady singing on there. It's hard to to 
to be up there with Pat Benatar, man, redo her hook mm. with that class. You can out sing Pat Benatar, but you can't outclass her. You know what I'm saying? Her style is just, that's what makes her win. You know, like Cindy Lauper, her style is not all about who can sing the best with them. Their delivery and their style is what sells that game that you love so much. You know what I'm saying? So to be able to deliver that and have an impact impact like Pat Benatar, where the people actually like it, you know, it's a lot. She did well too. Mm-hmm. Raz threw me in there though. I got to talk at the beginning and talk some shit. Yeah. He invited me to that party when Daz and Snoop and Nate did uh, Big Pimpin' with a Butter Rim soundtrack. Mm-hmm. See, they didn't even give me an intro. I couldn't even get the intro. I came back home from Philly. He was working on a Butter Rim. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 what's this though? We did DPG for life and then they played Big Pimpin'. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, what's this? Yeah. Oh, come on, man. I always miss these fun records like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Bitches ain't shit and ain't no fun. They're the only ones I got a chance to get on. Mm. Everything else they had that was fun. I miss them boats. Mm. Every time. Yeah, I always wanted to hear you on the shiznit. I thought that beat was just like textbook corrupt. But, you know, like you said, with one take Jake, it just was not to be. Yeah, buddy, you know, it was dog's time. But they blessed Dog and Dr. Dre blessed us with that doggy dog world. That's what I was like, wow. Dr. Dre said, okay, I want I want Daz and Corrupt on here with you on this one, Snoop. Hmm. He was like, oh, okay, cool. One of the Dog. greatest videos of all time, too. Wow. You know, Dr. Dre and Snoop, you know, when they get their heads together, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, you know, Ricky Harris was in that video and obviously that's brought him back to that. That's our cousin, yeah. rest in peace. Yeah, what can you say about him, man? He's Easy Dick. Mm-hmm. DJ Easy Dick. That's Ricky Harris. Yeah. Yeah, buddy, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, Ricky's our big cousin. You know what I'm saying? And Ricky made it first out of all of us. Ricky Harris in the comedian world and film period television film you know he was the first star and uh you know so when dog made it first thing dog did was brought all of us to the table but ricky harris he brought me he brought daz he brought nate him and warren g wrapped us all up you know what i'm saying and uh and rbx so all of that came from g dub and snoopy hmm. you know and that's that two one three shit, that Long Beach shit, just racked them all up. I was the only one from South Central. Dog brought me to the table. And Warren G worked with me and got me right. Told Daz about that machine, Dr. Dre and Warren G. And me and Daz made the dog pound. And Daz was my Dr. Dre. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, you know, each one teach one, you know, the history of things. But yeah, Ricky Harris was a vital part of Snoop's life too, you know, because Long Beach, they all got jokes. Ricky Harris had super jokes, you know. So, you know, they always was about fun. You know what I'm saying? So rest in peace, Ricky Harris. Yeah, we were talking about Ricky Harris and uh, and the humor that, that you guys used to put on all your albums, right? And there's humor in this one too. Uh, you got the Cat Williams skit and things like that. So is that is that from you or who who kind of like shepherded that? Um, that's Raz. <clears throat> you know, Raz always got jokes anyway from Carson to <laughs> keep the jokes. But uh, yep, that was Raz right there. Raz threw that good whoop bop up in there. Yeah. He keeps the fun. Yep. <laughs> Me, Killer Priest, and Cannabis just went throw hail and fireballs at motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Raz, is, is that who you met first? Raz? On this shit right here? Not in general, like back in the day. Uh, rotated. Rotated. The music, yeah, the music brought out uh brought out the MC. So, you know, it's all about the feeling. Hmm. And we just, you know, we follow the lead. So if I'm not, you know, if it makes me go, I lead. Raz, he'll lead. Just whoever feels it, 
they go. We just follow their lead. Yep. Yeah, but you two go back the farthest, right? Like you met him first in life? Yep. First one I met was Raz. Mm-hmm. Yeah, buddy. So the, the song, The Last Ride, you know, puts the questions about the group to bed. Regardless of whatever the future holds surrounding this album, how does that feel to just, you know, make this statement at last? Uh, finally did it. You know what I'm saying? Makes makes us all feel proud and especially the way the people took it. You know, they really embraced it, which hasn't been seen in a mighty long time for hip hop, for the actual hip hop culture. But um, we all felt proud accomplishment, goal set and completed, you know, filled in a void in all of us that we had, you know, you make your own accomplishments, get higher and higher in the game, but there's always that one void where it's like, man, what would this have been like? And you always wonder that. And now that void has been filled. You know, before we started recording, you had mentioned a couple of things ahead, you know, before you let you go corrupt. Um, I know you have some exciting, you know, things in the works. Anything you want the fans to know? Yeah, man. Check out everything, man, on my Instagram, and my Twitter, at official underscore corrupt, where you can see everything that's going on with me. It can best explain more than I can for my solo career and what's going on there, which I plan on dropping a solo album uh, come the end of this year or beginning of next year called Transition with HMG. Doll Pound album, DPG for Life, will be dropping in August. You know what I'm saying? We dropping that album. We got our main single because we gave him a couple treats from the album already. But now we finna drop our main single, Me, Daz, and Snoop called Nice and Slow. Mm. Also, we have the book to the album, DPG for Life, which we based the album off of, you know what I'm saying? So y'all can get the book, it's out now. As you can see, very descriptive. Oh, dope. A lot of pictures too, huh? Yeah, a lot of good pictures for people to see. Damn. Oh, wow. Art working things like that, you know what I'm saying? So you'll really love it. Daz and Corrupt tells the whole story from our perspective. You know what I'm saying? Bam. Love that photo. So it's a real good look. Look how young Daz was. <laughs> Big face, mouth, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think people really going to enjoy this, this the book. You know what I'm saying? It goes back to our youth. Daz and Snoop, youth in Long Beach. Goes into my youth. Then us together, off of Franklin, first dog pound we created, Snoop's apartment, called it the dog pound, goes all the way back from there till now. So, you know, uh, it's a great read and the album is a great listen to. So, you know, that's coming August, book is out now. And then, you know, also Horsemen, we're still rising. We're gonna drop our next video coming up this shit right here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and morticians. Mm. So, you know, y'all get ready for that. As you can see, our videos are like film. Mm. You know, it's hard to do regular videos in real life, real time with these words that we're coming with. So we had to be more creative than that. So that's why ours is really animation and shit like that. So the visuals can you know, match these lyrics, Hmm. you know what I'm saying? You know, so, you know, I got a clothing line called Iconic Clothing. That's going to be coming beginning the next, uh, beginning of the year. So, you know, it's a lot of good things and I'll be retroing and bringing back my corrupt moon rocks next summer. Give the people what they want. I had to take it off because there was so many different moon rocks. Felt like Nike. Mm -hmm at the Sloss and Swap Meet. Everybody going to Sloss and Swap Meet to buy my Nikes and they ain't my Nikes. So now I'm gonna bring back the Jordans come next summer. Moon rocks. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta do it. 
Yeah. But yeah, man, come check me out, man, and get updated with what's going on with Corrupt, Dog Pound, you know what I'm saying, Horseman. You know, we got a lot more coming. We'll let people know this is our final album, which Raz said it best. It's the final album to bring in what, what we're about to start anew. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Then we're going to be coming with another Horseman project next year. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, on a whole new wop wop. We had to complete this chapter in order to get to the next chapter. Oh, yeah. That's dope. Church. Corrupt. We've been fans, man, since, you know, the chronic all the way through Poetic Justice, through three Streets as a Mother, through Horseman, the whole career, man. So thank you. Thank appreciate you. Thank you very much. Again, salute on this, man. A lot of people would have let it go, you know what I mean, after 20 years and all the, you know, the, the starts and stops. But you guys saw it through, and that, that's a testament to you guys as, as, as MCs and men. So appreciate you. God is good. God is good. And, you know, uh, I have a great team. Raz, Killer Priest, Cannabis, great team. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it takes, you know, it takes a team to win a championship. M80, Conway, Fat Beats for believing in us, distributing this great project. Uh, all of that's what came about to make it happen. Donnie Arcade, Gifted Glitch, you know, visuals and artwork and the whole whoop wop. You know what I'm saying? Get ready for my corrupt bump box too. That's dope, yeah. Uh, we have bump box, gonna be dropping some of this corrupt whoop wop. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Corrupt man, thank you so much. Yep, the album that. last ride on Fat Beats Records out on all DSPs now. Go get that, go press play. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right.